So let's take a look at Keyshot Hub and some of the capabilities that it offers for Keyshot Studio customers. One, it allows them to have advanced permission control to control exactly who has access and when they have access to that content. Collaboration made easy by adding uh, comments and annotations for design reviews and for the design team. Having a single secure location for the designers to be able to put their Keyshot assets, images, Photoshop documents, even CAD files, and, and virtually anything else. Being able to have version tracking, so if you make changes, you can save it, and then at any time you can roll back to an earlier version. And then also being able to have discoverable assets. After all, many of the things you create, you want to be able to retrieve and use at a later date. So let's take a look at Keyshot. We can see that we've opened up a our new bike helmet. It's the 2024 Envoy helmet. Uh, we've got some materials and a few things applied on it. Um, these materials came directly from our Envoy hub uh, location. So this is tied directly into my hub, which we'll take a look at that in just a minute. But you can see here I have a number of materials. I can actually come in and filter out these materials. I've got tags and various information. So it may be that we want to filter out some of this content. So we could say, you know, just show me black materials or white materials or just materials that are maybe painted. So, you know, being able to, to filter and leverage all of that content. Um, so let's take a look at the actual hub. You'll notice in Keyshot, I have a hub icon down below that'll launch the hub. And then I can come in and look at my hub from my browser. So this is something my entire team has access to. And, you know, we can post our um, materials, our various content that we're all using, making sure that we're all up to date on that. Um, I can also, you know, the team can collaborate and work off of this particular helmet where they're putting their, conce their concepts up there, their key shot scenes, uh, CAD files, all those types of things. So if I look at some of the, the conceptual sketches, you know, some of these are images and I can filter out just images. Some of them are PDFs, some of them are Photoshop files. You'll notice we get a nice little preview of all of those. Uh, if I can also filter by author. So if I want to see just things that I'm working on, uh, when I come into this particular sketch, you'll notice that there are some comments and annotations. Um, and I can see some little bubbles here with some comments that, um, you know, in this particular design review, it was called out that we want to be able to have an interchangeable lens. We want, you know, great airflow, uh, ventilation, and then an LED light on the back. So being able to, in a design review, capture some of these things, even um, adding certain people if I wanted to tag a user to come back and review. Uh, and then, you know, anytime somebody's uh, added, then, you know, there, there's also a notification that gets sent to them. So they'll see any notification, uh, any commenting that, that people have added. So let's step back. Um, that's, you know, from the concept, we can take a look at our material library. You can see here that I've got a number of different materials in here and I can filter these. It may be that I have hundreds of materials and I want to be able to just filter certain ones. Um, much like you just saw on Keyshot, I could say, show me just plastic material, maybe plastic and red material. So you can easily filter out, you can tag those and customize that as needed. Um, so I've got all my materials and these are actual MTL files that come over. Um, from Keyshot and when I'm in Keyshot, I have access to these exact same materials. So the great thing, my entire team has the same access to these materials. So everybody's getting the latest and greatest. Um, and then let's take a look at, um, we'll go back to our, we have a work in progress. And this is just some active work that we're working on. Now you'll notice the, the structure that we have here. This is something that can be customized per team. So in this case, you know, we have high level projects and then inside of there, we've got subfolders and have various content in there. And that these can be customized however you choose. If I come into work in progress and look in scenes, I can see that I have a number of key shot scenes in here. I also have an illustration file. I can filter and just see that illustration file. It automatically gives me that thumbnail based on the illustration file. Uh, and I've got some packaging information and a, a few things in here. Um, I also can have other content. So maybe in this particular case, that uh, let's go back to our CAD models. You know, I may have some CAD models in here that I want to manage and, and be able to link to my uh, key shot scenes. So maybe something like this particular scene here, um, I could link the CAD model to it. So if I go to my related assets, I can see down at the bottom that the Envoy um, 3D CAD model that came over from, from Fusion 360 is tagged as a related item. And then I have a whole bunch of renderings that are also directly from this scene. So it makes it really easy for me to see, uh, you know, what I use this scene for and the content that's coming along. 
Um, so let's take a look. We'll go back to our renderings. You can see I have a folder for a lot of the renderings and there's some really nice things that I can do here if I want to compare a couple of these images. We'll just grab a few of those and we'll do a, a comparison, just an image slider. And I can see the difference between these two images. Now, you know, you can imagine if I was messing around with the matte or shininess of this and I wanted to do a comparison or a light study, um, you know, I could do a nice side by side comparison of that. And I can also com uh, compare the metadata if I've got various metadata that, that I'm tracking. Um, and then let's also, one other thing we're going to note, you'll, you'll notice when I come in and look at this concept, I have this conceptual image that we looked at. Um, I can have individual files being uh, displayed in multiple locations. So if I come back to my presentations, you'll notice at the bottom that I have that same file here. In fact, it has all the same comments and annotations. So I can have a single file represented in multiple locations. So it, it helps me that I'm not having to create duplicates and then manage those duplicates and worry about if I make a version to one, what do I do with it, the, the other one? So just uh, this is kind of a high level of hub. Let's jump over to Keyshot Studio and have a look at how this all works inside of, of Studio. So if I go to, uh, to my file pull down, I can actually open up a new scene and I'm just gonna open up that clay model. So it's opening this directly from my hub. We can take a look at, uh, we can take a look at this. We, we wanna come in and filter my materials down to my Keyshot library underneath my helmet. So we're gonna see that it shows fewer materials. And then I also can come in and filter based on type. So we may say, you know, we've got some plastic materials we wanna to apply to this. So I'm just gonna filter based on some of the, the tagging there. We're gonna drop a, a, the sheet on, or the shell on there. Um, I've got some screw caps that we're gonna apply. We've got the buckle down here. Now all these materials are coming directly from the hub. So again, if I'm working with the design team, they're all able to see the same content. I also know I wanna work off of my glass. And you know, I recently added a new material in here and I can see it showed up here, but imagine if I've clicked on this and I wanted to adjust some of the tagging. You can see that if I click on that, I can see the, the various tags, the finish, the color that it's glass. If I wanted to remove the glass from that, it would no longer show up when I use the, the glass filter. Um, so it's really easy on the fly that I can add other tags in here so that when I'm using these in my design, uh, I'll be able to see those same tags here in my design and in my hub. And you know those are searchable and usable by all that I'm working with. So let's drag and drop this lens on, on the, the lens there. And then we'll do just a couple more. We're gonna open up our filter again. We want some, we've got some fabric. So we're gonna drop a strap on here. And then we also have just a, a foam insert that we wanna apply. So we've added a couple of materials there. Um, all, now these, all these materials are um, multi-material. So if I double click on one, you can see they're multi-material. I can change the colors of those, which is really nice. It just carries over acts, you know, like, like you normally would expect with materials inside of Keyshot. Um, we also wanna just drop our cover there. So now that we have this, we wanna be able to create some renderings of this. And we're just gonna reset our camera. Uh, we wanna be able to render directly from here now, one of the things that we did in, in Keyshot 2024.1, we added the ability to have a post sharpen effect on our image. So we're gonna go to render. And then from in here, uh, we wanna make sure that we're saving it to our Envoy hub project instead of local. I can come in here and specify exactly where I want it to go. So we're gonna say, let's go to our uh, presentation folder. So we've got some renderings in here already. So we're gonna save it there. And then I'm gonna come in and make sure that it's not too long. It, you know, we'll say 10 seconds per frame if needed. And then with this, we have the, the new sharpen effect uh, in Keyshot 2024.1 that allows us to, to, to do a post sharpen effect. And, and we've got it set up to do a sharpen of zero, two, and four. So we're gonna take that and have it create three different renderings for us at the different sharpening effects, and then be able to review what that's gonna look like. So with that, we're just gonna process our queue, we're gonna see it kick it off. And once it starts rendering, we'll jump over to the hub. We'll see these start to show up in the hub. And we wanna do a comparison. If you remember that slider that we used, being able to slide left and right, uh, we wanna be able to use that and, and compare the difference between each of these, the sharpness of zero, the sharpness of two, and the sharpness of four. 
So the first one's about done. It'll save it to the hub and then we'll jump over, take a look at that. Uh, let's come over here. And if you remember right, we saved it in uh, in our helmet, in our presentations folder. We'll just refre refresh that to get that first one to show up. So there's our first one. It'll take just a second to get the other two. So once they're once they're over, we want to do a comparison so we can see the sharpness of zero and sharpness of two. We're going to compare those. If you remember our uh, the the comparison slider, you can see I'll slide this back and forth. We probably wanted a little bigger image, but you can see not as much detail over here as over here. If I slide this over, we're not capturing near the detail with our fabric here. Um, and we may want to do a comparison. We'll refresh and get that third one, which is a sharpness of four, a bit more sharp, sharpened. So we'll do a slider between those. And you can see as I go back and forth, there's a, a bit of difference between the sharpness of zero and four. So, you know, it, it's a great tool in a designer view to be able to have some of those conversations on which images do we want. We may find that, you know, ultimately we want uh, the sharpness of four. So I just want to get rid of these other two images so we can come in and just delete those. I also could come in and say, I may want to keep them around for a little while. So I'm just going to tag them as expired. And what this will allow me to do, if I go to the right place, we'll say where we can say, let's, there we go. So remove that. We'll say these are expired and save that. So what that's going to do is actually after uh, 90 days, they'll delete, permanently delete. But for right now, they'll be able to stick around so that I can see and use those. So we'll come back here. Um, now from there, you know, we've been able to render, we've been able to see uh, applying materials. Uh, we can also come in and take a look at some of the versions. So I'm gonna take a look at this Envoy helmet. So you'll notice that we've got our all of our related assets. We have two different versions. In fact, if I go over to another helmet here, um, we can take a look at this white clay model and, and we're doing a bit of work uh, linking um, leaking materials so that you know all the caps and and everything they were set up so if i dropped a material on it would apply it to the entire scene and if i look at my versions uh, i can see all the different versions that were created while i was doing that even though they're all just white materials if i wanted to roll that back to an earlier state i could just come in and say let's restore that um, i can turn on the date of when these were created so you can set your um description, action, you know, there's a upload date. So I can see when all of these were generated. If I wanted to go back to the very first one, I could just say roll back to that particular one and, and be able to, to leverage that. So if I restore an older version, anybody that opens that design is automatically get going to get uh, that older version as my latest and greatest. So, you know, those are some, some key capabilities to be able to have related assets, my version control, and then being able to have all the commenting and annotation. And you can see I've got a, a comment here early on that we wanted to be able to use this. It was ready now to start adding the various materials and start working on that. So, you know, just some of the, the core capability. So, you know, being able to, to manage all of my assets. So all my 2D and 3D assets, my material, all my content that my team's working with, my work in progress content, my scenes, all of those things. I can have my CAD data and actually link my CAD data to my Keyshot scenes so that I can see later I have an audit trail that I can see where where um, my scene came from. And then we have all of our presentations and, and documentation. Now, one, uh, one last thing that we're gonna take a look at, we've got these three images and it may be that I wanna show those in more than one location. So you'll notice here that I can do a multi-edit. I can tell it that we wanna show them in additional folders. So right now they're just being showed in this presentation folder. I may also want them to be in my rendering folder here. So even though it's a single document, I can actually have them represented in multiple locations. So if I come in here to my work in progress rendering, we'll refresh that and we're gonna see that those new images are actually in here. So you can see all three of those are showing up in here. Uh, it's a single file, so if I made changes to one, it's gonna reflect it in both of those locations. So if you remember, I just as we were highlighting our uh, capabilities here, you know, being able to have advanced permission control of who had access to what, um, being able to collaborate through commenting and annotations, a single location, uh, secure location where I can control and manage all of my data, 
and then version tracking, whereas I'm making design changes, adding new content, even materials, I can have uh, version tracking that if I need, I can roll back to or see when I saved it and who saved that. And then also being able to, to discover those assets, you know, being able to search by um, tagging, typing in key searches and things like that. <laughs>